Hey guys, welcome back to another video. All right, so today I'm taking a look at the Gerber armbar drive. Let's check it out. So the Gerber armbar drive comes in a pretty plain box. You see the Gerber logo on the front there and just logo there and just some info right there on the bottom. But let's put all that to the side and let's check out the armbar drive itself. Now when Gerber announced the armbar drive, I was pretty excited. I'm always on the lookout for new multi-tools, especially ones that are smaller, more compact, that have all the tools that I use on an everyday basis. And this one seemed almost perfect for me, except for one or two missing tools that I would like to see in here. Now the armbar drive is a seven in one multi-tool. Looks like the outside here is made of anodized aluminum and the rest of the tools are made of stainless steel. Now Gerber does not disclose what type of stainless steel this is but if i had to guess i would say 8cr13 mov or 420hc as you see in most of the gerber tools or leathermans which would explain the 39 dollars price point on this each one of those steels comes in at the budget range so you're not going to get great edge retention or corrosion resistance but you are going to be able to sharpen this blade pretty easy so right there on the blade we have it labeled gerber and right over here on the pivot point we have the gerber logo all right so now let's talk some specs we have a length of 3.6 inches and a width width of 0.7 inches and they say it weighs in at 3.1 ounces so let's test that out right now all right let's plop this guy on there and see what it says boom 3.1 so they're pretty accurate on their website description and let's check out what that would be in grams so that's 88 grams i always love when a manufacturer nails the exact weight in their descriptions that makes me happy all right so let's talk about the tools here first we have a pry bar we have a bottle opener a little mini hammer a two-sided bit driver and all some scissors and lastly a plain edge blade all right so now let's start going over these tools let's start with the one you're probably going to use the most on this multi-tool and that's the blade. It comes in at 2.5 inches and it's a modified sheep foot design. So that means it's a pretty nice slicing blade, but if you're looking for that piercing ability, it's not gonna be that great. Also, we have this thumb hole right here. So it is possible to open this one-handed. It's just not too comfortable to do so. Now I don't have the largest hands in the world, but just based on how small the body is, it's just hard to get a firm grasp on it while opening it. You can see I have to adjust my hands a couple times while opening it because of how the body is shaped and how small it is. But it's still possible to do it one-handed, so that's one plus right there. And next, this blade is the only locking tool on the arm bar. So you can see right there, it is a liner lock. So it is appreciated to have this blade locked in while it's extended. And this thing comes ultra sharp from the factory. So grab a piece of paper here. So it slices super easy. I mean, it just cuts right through paper. As you can see here, now let me grab some cardboard here and show you guys. Yeah, you guys can see it just cuts through cardboard without a problem. So it's gonna be a pretty nice utility knife as well. Also, I really like the finish on this blade. We got that nice stonewashed look on each side. So I really like the look of this blade. But let's talk about something I don't like about this blade. So when we close it, it gets caught on that little indent but then I start to close it more. Let me see, let me turn it this way. And there's no catch. It just kind of just eases its way back in there. And there is a little bit of a snap to it, but that's because of that indent. And I'm sorry, I don't know the official word for that indent, but you can see it right there. So when it closes, it's gonna catch on that other spot I just showed you and sort of lock into place. But I'll get to all that a little later on in this video. So let's get to why I actually wanted and was excited for this armbar drive. And that of course is the bit driver. So this is made of stainless steel and comes in at two and a half inches and it is magnetized. So it takes any quarter inch hex bit. Now it does come with the flat head and number two one inch bit already and it is magnetized. So when I stick it in there, it just snaps right into place. So check that out. So that's really nice. Now the reason I was so excited about this because I have tons of quarter inch bits and you can use any single bit that you have in any of your toolkits. And you don't only have to use the one inches obviously, you can actually use some of the two inches here and get yourself a little bit more extension. Or you can use any two inch quarter inch extension and use any of the one inch bits and 
boom, you have yourself a nice little tool here. So that's the reason I was super excited about grabbing one of these because I don't always like to carry a screwdriver on me at work. But all that excitement kind of slowed down when I finally opened this thing up and found out it doesn't lock. I'm not exactly sure why they decided not to have this lock into place. So when you're using this, obviously you're in this position and pushing down with some force. So every single time I make a turn, when I get around here, it just slips and falls down. Now I found a nice little workaround. Bend it 90 degrees like this and use it as a T-handle. So that way I can get a nice grip on the handle here and push down. But the problem is now I'm doing this motion instead of one continuous motion like this. Now just for that reason alone, I probably wouldn't use this at work or any serious projects that I have. It just would have been nice to have this lock in. Now if you're not gonna give me a lock, you have to give me a nice slip joint. And the slip joints in this armbar drive are non-existent. Now look at this. Now if I get closer to the camera, there is absolutely nothing snapping this back into place. I mean, look at this. This is really bad. So why Gerber decided to put this bit driver without a lock or a nice slip joint on here is beyond me. And when I say the slip joint on this armbar drive is non-existent, I wasn't kidding. So watch what happens if I lift up on this bit driver here. Look at this. All the other tools want to come with it. All right, so enough about that. So if I want to get to the awl that's dead center, now look at the spacing of the thumb notches right there. It is almost impossible to reach in there if you don't have any thumbnails and get that all out without taking every single tool out first and then lifting up on it as so. And, oh my goodness, grabbing it out like that. There's hardly no room in there to try to get your fingernail and try to press up to try to get only one tool out. You have to basically do exactly what I just showed you and fidget around with each of these tools before I get it out. So now that it's out, the awl is actually pretty nice on this. It's actually really sharp and comes to a really nice point. So this is one of the better tools that's on this armbar drive is the awl. Now I don't mind that it's only about an inch long. I know why they had to do it because when you fold it back in, there's only that much room left in between the driver and your scissors. And once again, there is no slip joint. There is no locking mechanism on this all. So it's just loose here and you push it back in and nothing grabs onto it, just fits right back into place. And right next to that, probably my biggest disappointment on this multi-tool are the scissors. So check this out, does not lock in. The slip joint is terrible. And my biggest disappointment is how this thing works and just how it folds away. It's basically all the way wide open. So look, so if I push these back, goodness, look at that. There's your scissors. So once again, I'm not really sure why they designed the scissors this way to have it spread all the way open and then fold it back in. So one positive thing I can say about these scissors is how nice it fits back in there. So you see that little notch right there. That's where you put your thumb and that little cutout fits in there perfectly. And if you do have some nails, you can actually take it out through that little handle, open it back up, push it backwards, oh my goodness, and there you go. But now that these are open, they're actually some of the worst scissors I've seen on a multi-tool. They just feel janky and cheap. I can't explain how these feel. The spring action is not that bad, just everything else about it just doesn't feel right. Now I do use scissors all the time in my work, so I was really hoping for some nice scissors on this thing. So it just adds to my disappointment with this Gerber armbar. Let's talk about the three tools that are actually great on the armbar. So right here is your little mini hammer or pommel. So obviously this doesn't replace a hammer, but it's gonna come in handy if you just have to nail in something really quick. And then next to get to the other two tools here, all we have to do is press up and then boom, we have a nice little prior right there. And then we flip it around, there's our bottle opener. So this tool actually works really great. This was one of the reasons why I wanted to have this. I wanted to have this little prior bottle opener and little mini hammer all in one. I got this little one inch nail. So let's just see how well this little mini hammer can hammer in a little one inch nail into some wood, so, and. All right, let's just see what we got here. Okay. All right. So that's not gonna go in any more than that right there. Now obviously I know you're gonna use a hammer instead of this, but I just wanted to test and see what you could do 
if you had to use one of these. Now also right here, I had this little one inch screw. Now let's make ourselves a nice little starter hole. And let's use this bit driver. Let's see what we can accomplish. So, move it right there. Okay, so already this is extremely uncomfortable just based on the design of this thing. So what I was talking about is make it 90 degrees like this and make yourself a nice little T-handle and then turn it as so. Even so, you're kind of doing this motion, okay? Or this motion, which is extremely uncomfortable to do, but this is the reason why I said this is just a, not a practical bit driver. You know, if I'm standing up and I'm pushing down on this, it just does not feel like it's comfortable at all. And plus, it just keeps wanting to bend over. But in a pinch, if you need this Phillips or flathead, I guess it's okay to have this right in your pocket. But you're just not gonna be doing any serious projects with this anytime soon. All right, so let's take a look at some of its competition. I also have this Victorinox Explorer here, and some of the best slip joints you're gonna see on a multi-tool. If you want a comparison of how bad the slip joint is on this armbar drive, if I open and lock it, and then open up the main blade on the Victorinox, the slip joint here, I mean, just snaps into place. It just feels so good when you open up the blade on this Victorinox. Now, yes, the blade does have a lock, which is nice. When I close it, it doesn't feel like the attention to detail was ever there, as opposed to the slip joint on the Victorinox. Watch this. As soon as I close it about right there, it just snaps right in. Now, this is what I'm talking about to have a nice slip joint on a multi-tool. It snaps open nice, it's not going anywhere. When you close it, it just wants that blade back. Next, let's talk about the scissors. Some of my favorite scissors on a multi-tool are on this Explorer. So when we open this, once again, nothing holding in place. When we open up the Victorinox, it snaps right in. These feel super smooth. I love the spring on this Victorinox. It just feels nice and solid, high quality. As opposed to these, they just feel cheap. And listen, this is what I'm talking about. It just feels so cheap as opposed to, it's just not even a comparison. And then when I close the Victorinox scissors, all I have to do is just lift up on it and snaps right back in. As opposed to here, we have to turn these inside out and push from the bottom here and, ah. Oh, Guys, I don't know. And it's not like this is an unfair comparison at all. The Victorinox is about $47 and this is about $39 on Gerber's website, even though you can pick them up right now for about $31. And now the next comparison, the Leatherman T2. So there's the size difference. This one's a lot wider, as you can see. And there's the thickness, not much difference there. So let's talk about the Leatherman knife. Yes, it does have a lock locks into place. It still has that nice little snapback with the magnets in there. But that's the T2. Let's talk about the T4 for a second. So let's get out the scissors. So bring out the scissors, locks into place. So once again, let's compare the scissors here. On the Leatherman, very nice action. Not so nice on this Gerber. And also something I didn't mention about the armbar is there's no pocket clip. They didn't give us a pocket clip. I really don't like to have tools or multi-tools just hanging around in my pocket, flying around as I walk. Yes, that is an issue with me with the Victorinox Explorer, but I did go out and I bought a leather case for this to put on my belt, so that's a non-issue for this. I'm not sure, maybe you can just get a flashlight case. I'm not sure if Gerber makes a case for these yet, but I do wish they included a pocket clip. So it might sound like I'm bashing the heck out of this thing. I don't mean to, I actually do like this little thing. I do like the blade, all right? I like the three-in-one hammer, pry and bottle opener. I just wish there was somewhat of a slip joint on all the tools. I wish there was a locking mechanism on the bit driver and I wish these scissors didn't feel so cheap and janky. All right guys, that's pretty much it for this video. What do you guys think of Gerber's armbar drive? Now I think I'll let you guys know how I feel about it. Overall, I would probably give it a three out of five because I still like the overall length and weight of this. Plus the blade is nice. 
Plus, I love having that pry bottle opener and hammer here. And in a pinch, I can still use this bit driver, just not doing anything serious with it. So this thing could have been a nice little mini multi-tool if they just address everything that I talked about in this video. Now it does come in three different colors. It comes in onyx, which is this color, also an orange, and also a blue. Now if you guys do want to pick one of these up, I will leave links below in my description box. I picked mine up on Amazon for about 33 bucks. But if you guys did enjoy this video, please give me that thumbs up. Please subscribe and go!